hope I will keep you alert and awake in this uh, final session of the day by uh, examining quite what is quite a controversial topic here in Ghana. Uh, the title is South-South Labour Migration and the Impact of the Informal China-Ghana Gold Rush 2008 to 2013. This is a, uh, a co-authored paper um, one of my co-authors, Dr. Gabriel Botchwe, is, uh, is, is here with us and will, um, will join me for, for questions. Uh, the paper is based on uh, two lots of field work, one which was undertaken in, in, in Ghana in mid-2014 uh, by myself and Dr. Botchwe. Uh, the the other, and we uh, undertook field work in the central and western regions of, uh, of Ghana, where small-scale mining is, is prevalent, and where a, um, the presence of Chinese miners had been very notable. And then there were some follow-up interviews, uh, which occurred just recently in August 2017 in China. And those interviews were undertaken by, by two colleagues, Nicholas Luber and Jisha Lu. And they uh, interviewed some of the returned miners um, from Ghana who were back in their, their home county in, uh, in China. For those who are less familiar with um, small-scale gold mining in Ghana, let me give you some, some background information. So artisanal and small-scale gold mining has been a, uh, uh, an informal sector, um, largely poverty-driven and a traditional means of livelihood uh, for many rural households for centuries, um, often supplementing agricultural activities and also using the same techniques for, for, for centuries, basically a sort of a, a pick, a shovel, and a, and a bowl. Small-scale mining has also made a, a, a significant contribution uh, both to the economy and to household incomes. This is indicated by some of the, the, the figures. I mean, these figures uh, vary a little bit, but um, say that there are estimates that there are 100,000 legal miners and uh, an estimated 1 million illegal miners, or galamse, as they're known in, uh, in local parlance. The... It is particularly notable that the, the, the percentage of uh, official gold output from small-scale mining has increased significantly over the last decade, and it is now over 30% of uh, overall official gold output. Another important point is that small-scale mining is an indigenous activity. By law, it's reserved for Ghanaians. Only Ghanaian citizens can... Uh, get a, uh, a, a license, I uh, get a, a concession of land and uh, a license to, uh, to mine. Therefore, all foreign mining is officially illegal. But despite this, there's been a significant external migration of miners into this informal sector in recent times. So from 2008 onwards, with the hike in gold prices, significant numbers of foreign miners came into Ghana, and the large majority of these were from China. And by 2013, a Chinese newspaper reported that an estimated 50,000 miners had left China for Ghana. And they became, in, in Ghana, they became known as the, the, the Shangling Gang, and this is because the, the, the large majority of them came from Shangling County in, in Guangxi province. Um, which itself had a, had a long uh, historical tradition of, of gold mining. It's interesting that Shanglin, the, the population there, is uh, primarily um, a minority ethnic group, the Zhang group, and they also have a history of migration. So throughout the, uh, the, the 1990s, Shanglin residents migrated domestically within China to engage in small-scale mining around uh, the country. But then the Chinese government tightened regulations on this type of activity, and the Shanglin miners then looked outwards. And in the late 2000s, stories of people striking it rich in Ghana resulted in a mass exodus of Shanglin miners to, to China, where it was reported 
that they established over 2,000 mining operations. Now, how, how was this possible, particularly in a, in a context of, um, of illegality? Well, perhaps unsurprisingly, there was a significant cooperation and, and, and collusion from, from, uh, from Ghanaians, including Ghanaian miners. Unsurprising because the Chinese miners were coming into a very different culture and, and, and society, often with little or no English. Um, therefore, the, uh, the cooperation of Ghanaians was, was necessary. And a phrase that we heard very frequently during field work is that the Chinese were led by Ghanaians. And commonly, they would be led to the local chief to negotiate over access to land. We were also told that the Chinese miners paid lump sums to chiefs and local land landowners, um, as well as bribes to, uh, to local government officials in order to, to undertake their mining activities. And with the price of gold rising uh, rapidly to almost $2,000 per ounce, the numbers of Chinese miners increased uh, very significantly. And by 2013, the situation was described to us by a, a senior official from the Environmental Protection Agency as out of hand and characterized by a culture of impunity. And a, the director of a small Ghanaian mining company who was involved with, the, with Chinese miners um, admitted that there was a free-for-all going on for Ghana's mineral resources and Ghana's gold. Let me turn to the, uh, the immediate in impact, because I think this is very significant. And that the, the Shanglin miners introduced new uh, technology and machinery. Essentially, they came with, uh, with, with, with capital. Uh, they organized themselves in, uh, in, in small groups. They borrowed uh, considerable sums of money from uh, financial institutions in, uh, in China, and with this, they purchased uh, excavators and, uh, and, and bulldozers and, um, and, and pumps for, for, for dredging. So essentially, uh, small-scale mining became mechanized. Excavators, crushing machines, wash plants, platforms and suction equipment for river dredging were all introduced by Chinese miners in, into Ghana. The latter, the, the, uh, the, the equipment for river dredging is particularly significant, as we'll see, because it's both illegal to mine in rivers and indeed within 100 meters of a river bank. Um, but this was a, a practice that was uh, introduced through the uh, equipment that had been used in China, brought to, uh, to, to, to Ghana, um, and then subsequently used by uh, Ghanaian miners. So there was a very significant intensification of, pro of production through mechanization, and we were informed that land was now mined in, in weeks, which previously would have taken years. Let me turn to the, uh, to the, the controversies. First of all, uh, it was illegal. As noted before, small-scale mining in Ghana is restricted to Ghanaian citizens by, by law. Secondly, the scale of environmental degradation intensified significantly um, through the mechanization of mining, both with land and water bodies. Third, while uh, sales of, um, of gold from small-scale mining to the, uh, the Precious Minerals Marketing Company, the official uh, government gold-buying agency, whilst those sales increased substantially at this time, there were also allegations of gold being smuggled out of the, out of the country, um, particularly by Chinese miners, with a consequent loss of uh, revenue to the state. And fourth, whilst this phenomenon of uh, migrant Chinese miners was mostly characterized by collaboration with Ghanaian miners, there were also instances of local conflict between rival uh, miners and with deaths and, and injuries on, on both sides and an increased incidence of, uh, of small arms. So given this controversial situation, what was the response of the, uh, of the state and, and the media? And strangely, the, uh, the state appeared to be, uh, to be absent. 
despite the, the, the illegality, despite the scale of, of, of what was happening, um, the state seemed to be, at best, very tardy in, um, in tackling the, the, the issue. But increasingly, there was a media outcry at, um, at what was happening and uh, a perceived foreign exploitation of, uh, of, of resources. And I'll just give a quote here from uh, an editorial in the, in the Daily Graphic, which uh, states this, uh, as we look on in helpless amazement, foreigners continue to degrade our lands and pollute our water bodies. Um, so uh, a, an, an, an outcry from the, from, from the media that was uh, attempting to, to put pressure on the, uh, on the government to, to do something. But also this media outcry was, um, was jingoistic in tone. And the reports in the, in the Daily Graphic would always refer to um, illegal migrants, illegal undesirable migrants, deviants, aliens, and, uh, and so forth. So uh, a very jingoistic tone, which was placing the, the blame for environmental destruction solely on the, uh, on the Chinese miners. But this um, uh, media pressure sort of uh, appeared finally to force the, uh, the government to act when in May 2013, President Mahama admitted that uh, we have a problem and established uh, a military task force um, to, uh, in the words used, flush out illegal miners. Um, this was uh, supposed to, to apply to all illegal miners, but um, really the, it was the, the, the foreign miners who were targeted and there was arrest and deportation of over 4,500 Chinese miners, along with small numbers uh, from uh, other, other countries. There was also the, the voluntary departure of, of many others, um, uh, given the, um, the, uh, the crackdown that finally happened. So let me turn to the, to the impacts of, uh, of this episode. So firstly, um, it's our contention that uh, with mechanization, uh, small-scale mining in, in Ghana has changed irrevocably. It's not going to go to go back again to the traditional methods. And it was the, the Chinese, it's our contention also, it's the Chinese involvement that triggered this, uh, this transformation. So the, firstly, the impact on the, on the sector. Um, small-scale mining, at least for some, is, uh, is no longer an informal, poverty-driven sector. It's become big business for, for, for some operators. And we, were, we interviewed some uh, Ghanaian miners, including those who'd worked with, the, uh, with, with, with groups of, of Chinese miners, and their earnings were quite extraordinary. Also, we had information from a, a Chinese resident in Ghana who had been involved with, uh, with uh, assisting and supporting Chinese miners. In his words, in four to five years, a lot of Chinese millionaires, even billionaires, were made. I'm not sure what currency he was referring to, in that statement, but clearly um, we're talking about a lot of money. But not everyone um, benefited in, in, in that way. In recent uh, field work, so the stratification and inequalities also increased. And in the, in the recent field work in, uh, in, in, in China, um, we were made aware of the, sort of the differential benefits among Chinese miners. The, those who arrived early tended to do very well. Those who arrived later, or as wage laborers rather than investors, they were not able to uh, earn such large sums of money and often were forced to, um, to return with, with debt. And also, um, in term, within uh, the Ghanaian context, um, Whereas the small-scale mining has become big business for, 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 for some, also we have uh, in, the, the, in the, the hierarchy um, a lot of, uh, of women and youth who are now rewashing the, uh, the tailings that are, that are left at um, pits which have already been, been, been mined by, by mechanized and intensified methods, now rewashing those tailings at abandoned pits to try and extract some, uh, some remnants of gold. What has been the, the, the economic impact? Well, there, there has been some positive economic impacts in both at micro, macro and micro levels. Certainly the volume of gold has in, increased significantly um, so that uh, small-scale mining now um, 
the, the increase in total gold production has gone up from 15% to 36% between 2008 and 2013. Um, and at the micro level, um, also the, the, the gold boom had a, a positive effect on the local economy. And we've got some quotes here from, uh, from different people around uh, Dunkwa on Offin where we, um, we undertook our research. So local businesses were booming, the town was hot, very busy, people had money in their pockets. And one Chinese miner interviewed recently back in China said that they wanted us there because uh, they could earn money too. In terms of the environmental impact, I think that is entirely negative. The one consequence of mechanization has been the intensification of environmental degradation in areas of alluvial mining, both in, uh, on land and water bodies. And in particular, the, uh, the scramble for, for, for land um, has led to the, the destruction of farmland and an adverse impact on uh, food and cocoa production. But I think it's the pollution of rivers which has been both a new and particularly catastrophic um, effect of, uh, of the, the introduction of mining, uh, of illegal mining in, uh, in rivers. And there's been a serious impact on the, uh, on the aquatic ecosystem and also on drinking water. And whereas we mentioned before that the, the state had lost revenue, the cost to the state of the this reversal of, of land destruction and water body pollution is, uh, is so huge that it's almost incalculable. Let me turn to political impact. And the, the discussion of the political impact over, overlaps to an extent with an explanation of why this extraordinary phenomenon of irregular migration and illicit mining on such a scale could be allowed to happen. And it brings us back to this question of, of, of where was the state during those years that uh, there were um, rising numbers of um, irregular Chinese migrants migrating into the, um, the uh, informal small-scale mining sector. But our findings really was that the, that the state was, was not absent, as first appeared to be this, the case. In fact, it was very present, but it was very present in a negative way. And during our field work, we were told lots of stories of, uh, of various forms of corruption. We were told that uh, Ghana Immigration Service officials provided both uh, entry visas and false work permits to, to, to Chinese miners. Um, there were some local government officials uh, also accepted payments to, to, to turn a blind eye, but at the same time there were lone voices in the, um, in the public sector who were opposed to what was, was happening but uh, found it difficult um, to, to pursue their, their, their opposition. One district level official told us that when he tried to, uh, to, to, to do something about the situation that he would receive phone calls and in his view uh, there was high level protection from those he called big shots in, uh, in, in government. And the, these uh, stories of corruption were also largely concerned by a sort of Chinese resident who was involved with the, uh, the Chinese miners, who's, in his words, uh, money talks, and many people were involved. He was referring to, uh, to government officials. We're also, in, it was also stated to us that the politicians protected the Chinese miners in return for financial support to sponsor their election campaigns in the run-up to the December 2012 elections. And even with the, um, and with the, with the, the, the task force, that was really a, a, a watershed. Um, and with that task force, we're told that there was this, this switch from, from the, the protection of Chinese miners to them being no longer protected by the, by the government. And, and that, that significant switch led to them and the, sort of the military crackdown led to the, the voluntary departure of many of them. But we're also told that there was corruption um, associated with the task force itself. 
which uh, made money. And um, we were informed by one licensed small-scale miner who had um, been involved with, uh, with, with Chinese miners that those who were arrested and deported were those who could not pay, who could not pay the task force. So this leads us to, to, to questions about the, uh, the nature of, the, uh, of the, the Ghanaian state. The state was not absent, it was pre-task force, it was present, but the political admi and administrative authority of the, uh, of the state and also the traditional authority of chiefs uh, appear to be used for private enrichment rather than public service. And this, um, the Ghana, of course, is a very positive uh, image as a, as a model of democratic governance, and I've written very positively myself um, previously about uh, successful democratic consolidation in, in Ghana. But in some ways, this, this research was, uh, was an eye-opener for me, and I felt a little naive um, in terms of uh, some of my previous work. At the same time, it's also uh, recognized that uh, you know, Ghana has made huge progress in terms of, uh, of, of ele elections and democratic consolidation around elections and, uh, and change of government. But I think this, this endemic corruption certainly um, tarnishes that, that model of, of, of democratic uh, governance. And one uh, key informant went so far as to say that the stain of corruption has spread so far that the color of the whole cloth has changed. Just to bring you up to, uh, up to date, um, this, the task force was now four years ago, and that, uh, it, it's, that military crackdown essentially uh, brought an, an end to that very widespread phenomenon of Chinese involvement and other foreign involvement in the small-scale mining sector. But we would argue that the, uh, the consequences continue to the, the, the present day. This is in particular with the mechanization and intensification of mining now being practiced by um, at least some Ghanaian small-scale miners, including um, mining in, uh, in river. The Chinese miners, they, they, they didn't all leave. We were told in recent interviews in Shanglin that uh, some kept a low profile for a while, others disappeared further into the bush, those that weren't in a position to, to, to return home. Also, um, a number of those that remained sort of shifted from actual mining to, to, to machine hire, or else they were engaged in the, sort of the, the, the hidden ownership of small-scale concessions, which were, uh, were, were fronted by, by Ghanaians. I think probably most alarmingly, the environmental degradation has, uh, has intensified. And in March 2017, the Ghana Water Company warned that the country would soon have to begin importing water for consumption if illegal mining activities were not curbed. And one month later, um, the, uh, the, the current government um, imposed quite a controversial six-month moratorium on all small-scale mining, legal and illegal, in Ghana, and introduced a military task force, Operation Vanguard, to enforce that. So in, in conclusion, we have uh, focused on south-south irregular migration from China to Ghana of tens of thousands of miners, um, from one, mainly from one particular county, to work illicitly in the informal small-scale gold mining sector. Um, and this occurred during the, the gold boom years of, of, of 2010 to 2013. We've traced the impact on the livelihoods of both Chinese and, and Ghanaian informal miners, as well as examining the wider economic, environmental, and political landscapes. There have been benefits for, for, for some, um, but also an adverse impact for, for, for many. Uh, we've suggested that the uh, whole episode um, casts a shadow on the, uh, on the Ghanaian state and self-serving elites. And finally, that the impacts and the consequences continue to this day. Thank you very much.